Hello, everyone. Welcome to a very special edition of a Tom Pop featuring Fat Man and Little Boy. My name is Steven. I'm Juan. And we are here to give a full, a full spoiler review of the final installment of the Skywalker saga, or at least, at least rumored, uh, Episode Nine, better known as the Rise of Skywalker. Oh, we're doing it today because apparently one of the uh, employees here, are, 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 who's dear to our heart, Little Juan Monotas, hates Star Wars. How do you hate Star Wars? I mean, I can understand you not liking it all the time or thinking some of it's bad, but, but, but speaking of, he's over there reading when he clearly didn't do the windows today. Anyways, um, he says oh, he, really he says he has no dad. Oh, that explains Naruto. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so because uh, Naruto has no dad, right? I've never seen Naruto. Well, apparently he has no dad, and there's these, this pervy white-haired guy that becomes his dad and then dies, and R- everyone cries. I- we're, we're, we're totally getting off. We're, get, we're getting off topic here. So yeah. let's let's set let's set the stage first, guys. Before we even talk about the movie, um, first of all, movie theater was not filled. It wasn't filled, which I found to be odd. Actually, Grant, it might not have been filled, but it could have been sold out. We don't know. Could have been, yeah, yeah. It could have been, and we saw it at the AMC in Pembroke Lakes, which is in Pembroke Pines, Florida, guys. This this movie theater is probably one of the best movie theaters I've ever been to. Yeah, it's really nice. Uh, screen was huge. Uh, and, and chair, you know, yeah, my son was blown away. Yeah. He walked, he was like, Oh my God. Yeah, he's like, the screen's oh so God. big. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> but like, yeah, dude. <laughs> no. Um, so, and then, uh, two people in cosplay. I saw a Kylo Ren. I saw a Ray. Yeah. Um, and then your son actually tried to wear a Darth Vader helmet. A Darth Vader helmet. And the, uh, they, let me tell you something. Go ahead. That Black Series, so it's from the Black Series. Yeah. Uh, we carry it here all the time, uh, the Black Series. Right now, we have the, some of the Marvel Legends stuff that's kind of almost like it. Yeah, li- life-size life wearable. Life-size wearable replicas, right? Yeah. And and the thing is that they're like usually about $100 to $120 yeah. for most of the stuff. So uh, I figured that $100, like how good could the quality be on this stuff? Yeah. So uh, you brought in the Vader helmet, and I immediately bought it for him for Christmas. Yeah. Didn't even go on the shelf. Didn't even go on the shelf. Yeah. Um, and so since we were going to the movie, I was I, I let him get it early, and we opened it, and dude, the quality is amazing. Very. Yeah. It looks great. like this is this is something you could role play with and, and look almost professional. Yes. And, so, and and it has the breathing sound. effect. It makes the breathing sound effects. Yes. It, it does not, however, have um, a voice changer. No voice changer. Um. So uh, we'll be right back. He always does this, guys. Always, always, you know. I tell him all the time, put your phone on silent. You know, let's take care of the fans, but no, no. You know, so that's my (laughs) ex-wife. And I have to pick up that phone call. Uh, That's Darth Vaderette. No, she's she she, because she's real. She's Uh, Satan. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) <laughs> Anyways, so so the the mask the mask yeah. was really 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 impressive. I mean, for a hundred dollars, like yeah. So I will be recommending those products from now on. Like that that is that is cosplayable, like really cool stuff. Um, but and and he was super happy with it. Um, walked they in made, with the helmet on. They made him take it off, like right away. Yeah, they're like no masks in the theater. Right away, right away. Now, yeah. meanwhile. People are walking in with replica weapons who... Yeah, lightsabers all over the place. Yeah, because, you know... All over the place. So my son pointed out how unfair it is, and I agree. Yeah. So, yeah, I didn't understand it either. It's like... So Not you- only that, but, like, how about this? How about we, 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 we could use our judgment, right? Like, yeah. maybe if some weird-looking dude is coming in with a trench coat and a fucking helmet, but it's obviously a 12-year-old kid. Yeah. You know, like let a kid wear a helmet. It's a kid. Yeah, uh, and a, a a Jedi robe though. That's, you know, that could you could hide stuff in a Jedi yeah, of robe course. too. Yeah. yeah. So. So yeah, whatever. That so, sucked. Shame on you, movie theater. Well, that was AMC. We don't know if Regal did the same. He was thing. super depressed about it. Was he really? Yeah. On the way home, he complained. He's like, he was like, Dad, I'm really sad. I only got to wear. For-. I was like, Oh, don't worry. We got a convention coming up. Next convention, you know, we'll, we're gonna go ahead and find you a cloak now and stuff, and we'll slowly build the cosplay. So there you go, there you go. Um, 
Aside from that, I went. I waited in concession line with uh, with his kid uh, while he put the helmet back in his car, and uh, and they said they wanted a large popcorn and a large soda. I said, okay, no problem. So then I get up there, and they had these R two D two special like commemorative uh, like popcorn holder things. Yeah. And I was like, I go to the girl. I go, how much? How much for the R two thing? She's like forty nine ninety nine. I was like, what wow. the. F- Fuck! I'm like I go no no way. She goes but comes with two two large popcorns and two large sodas. And in my mind, light bulb. Hey, one wanted a large popcorn, large soda, and I was gonna get popcorn and a drink, not a large, but hey, I'll suck it up for the R2 thing. And and the the, the popcorn soda was seventeen dollars multiplied by two. That takes you to thirty. Thirty four. So thirty four dollars. So I'm paying sixteen dollars for this R R2. It was a decent size too. Yeah. It's a good size. I'm like, look, I could put candy in it at my door or something like that. Yeah, I, sure. I, Fucking know, whatever. Something I don't need, but whatever. I got it anyways, right? So she comes to me with the R2. It's in a plastic thing. And she's like, do you want the popcorn inside? And I was like... Can and I- they, they didn't wash it out either. No, no, no. No, no. And, and I'm like, well, can I just get it in a bucket? She goes, no. No, you can't. And I'm like, all right, well, then just give put it in the R2 unit. I don't care. So she gives me an empty bucket. Uh, I mean, she gives me a bucket <laughs> of popcorn. She gives me the R2 uh, with the popcorn in it. And then she gives me one cup. And I'm like, well, what about the other drink? And she's like, oh, well, the top of the R2 unit has a thing that comes out, and you put the drink in there, and then the straw goes in the top. And I was like, like, really? <laughs> you know? Like, and, like, like, guys, this R2 unit was, like, this wide. So, like, here I am. Like, I feel like I'm, like, like on a <laughs> like on a, on a Star Wars tropical island with those weird – getting those weird tropical drinks and those weird custom mm-hmm. glasses and stuff like that. Very awkward. And horrible design, by the way. So, I got an Icy, okay? Now, Icy, guys, it's not fully liquid because there's an ice component to it, obviously, hence the term Icy. And the way this R2 unit head was – so, like, we all know R2 – head is like a a half sphere okay and the bottom of it had like a little like like drop thing for that you could like hold and that would also sit in the cup holder Mm -hmm. so what happens is is when you put the straw in and there's only like this much space for the straw and the straw is like this big when you put the straw in and you drink you suck out everything that's in that little lip and then nothing else comes out it's like it's empty even though it's still filled with stuff because the ice hasn't melted right, into right. the little tin yet. So if you had liquid, no problem, because it just keeps going and keeps filling right. up. But, but icy, yeah. no. So I hardly had any of my icy the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> my son couldn't stop laughing. It was a poor design. It was yeah. the, it was the worst thing ever. Probably the worst. Extra and it's super uncomfortable dollars. because the thing is, when you at, at least at first when the popcorn was filled, the head didn't fit back on. Yeah. So you had to sometimes somehow hold the body and separate from it the head. And the body was huge too. Yeah. So here I am watching Star Wars with like R two and it's actually my, like a small popcorn. My, the rest is all like plastic. Yeah, yeah. It was, which yeah. it's I didn't eat the whole thing anyways. By the way, you ate that whole bucket. I saw yeah, that. Yeah, me and my son. Yeah, that's we fucking took it insane, out. dude. Yeah, Jesus, we didn't have dinner. Whatever. Yeah. Oh, that was your dinner. Yeah. Oh my god, even so, worse. Let me dude, tell you. We didn't what, have time. You made me drive all the way up uh, there. It's from like. Fucking Kendall takes forever. I, 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 what do you mean? I made you. I gave you the option. You opted that because Broward movie theaters are better than Miami Dade movie theaters. Yeah, it's one hundred percent true. Yeah, you know, like I mean, it's not my fault that everything in Miami Dade sucks. Yeah, <laughs> especially Little Juan. Um, but uh, so uh, and then let, let me just finish setting the scene for you. So we're in, we're in a, we're in like probably like the the first row of the thing that goes up, and the the bars are there and stuff like that. And I literally have two. Single ladies bought one tickets each sitting next to me. Did you did you get a chance to to see those girls? No, I don't I'm oblivious. You're oblivious to your surroundings. Yeah. Okay. These like I don't care. Like they like it it was nerdum to the max. Like whenever something cute happened, they were like <laughs> like whenever music was playing, they would start dancing, you know? And I'm just like I'm just like, oh my god, I it makes sense. I get it. Like, like I thought to myself, like, why go to Star Wars opening night by yourself, as a woman too? On top of that, but the, the, just the way they were acting. Good for them. They enjoyed it, man. I guess. I wish I could enjoy it. Is that is that our segue into how, what we thought about the movie? I don't know. All right. So I think we took. I think we set the stage. That was what was happening. What do you think of the movie? Uh, I think I need to watch it again. I need to watch it again too. I, I need to watch it again before I come to a conclusion. Uh, I read a lot of the reviews. I think the reviews were wrong. 
for the most part. I read a ton of the reviews. Uh, I, I, I think agree. I think there were parts that the reviews that they were right, but they but they were overblown. Yeah. In how how bad what they were right on was. You feel me? Uh, there was fan service. They made it seem like it completely ruined the movie. I disagree. I thought a lot of the fan service was pretty on point. Like it was good appearances. It wasn't like overwhelming and overbearing. Yeah. Um so and, and you know a hundred percent they completely wiped out the last movie. Last Jedi. The Last Jedi was completely like retcon like it didn't exist. For the most part, yeah. You could watch you could skip part eight of the trilogy and be fine. Kind of. I mean, there's a few things you need to know. You need to know that Snoke died and Luke died. Sure. And, yeah. and even then, like, it was presented in, in a... And Kylo became yeah. the supreme leader. Yeah. So, um, completely retcon, and it didn't bother me. Like, it bothered these people because they really liked the last movie. I, I ended up not liking the critics last movie. Did. The critics, right? Yeah. I did not like the last movie, so I didn't mind the retcon. What I did mind is that because J.J. Abrams did that, he had to fit two movies into one. And it felt that way. Which is why I've always been an advocate for an episode 10, which clearly... I'm not an advocate whatever. for an episode I, it, What I'm an advocate for is next time, if you're going to have uh, someone overseeing this trilogy... Kathleen Kennedy. Um, She's the fuck But if here. you're going to have a director, he should have yeah. been on for all three movies. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because all of a sudden, since he's trying to wipe out the disaster that Rian Johnson did, now he's trying to fit in what he would have done in the last movie and this movie. And so... While the critics were hated it because it wipes out what Rian Johnson did, I hated it because it. I, I think that if J.J. Abrams was in charge of the whole trilogy, it would have been fantastic. Right. But we do have a blemish that is the last movie. And and I think if, if Abrams was in control the whole time, I think this would have been cl maybe even close to the original. What, is it like amazing? Yeah. But you shit on The Force Awakens. I shit on The Force Awakens, and, and the reason I shit on it was why. Because it felt too much like like A New Hope, right? I mean, the core plot mimicked A New right. Hope a lot. But, yes. but, as, but I'm, I'm, just from what he did with this movie, I think he, he actually has a sense of what Star Wars is. Yes. And even with the first movie. So I think at the end of the day, he could have made a fantastic trilogy. I, I agree. And, and the first one, listen, you know what, something I hated the most about the first one was Ray. I hated Ray in the first one. Why? Uh, I don't know. I didn't. I just didn't like her in in the first one. I didn't like Ray or Kylo Ren, and I ended oh. up there. I think Ray is. I'll take Ray over Luke any day. Look, first of all, I love Kylo Ren. I think Kylo Ren is one of the best characters ever in Star Wars. You know, I saw an article the other day that Kylo Ren's story should have been Anakin's story. Mm -hmm. You know, like, well, it kind of was. It was just it done a little better. Like, 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 what we saw from Kylo Ren should have been what we saw from Anakin back in the day. You know. Sure, but Kylo Ren never becomes as vicious as Vader, right? And I think that's Rian Johnson's fault, man. Why? Hmm. Why? He broke the mask. But he uh, listen, listen. First, first of all, I mean, for, uh, let let's go backwards. For, I thought Force Awakens was amazing. Even though, even though there were very similar elements to A New Hope, I kind of thought, I kind of saw it as like a remake of A New Hope in a sense. Sure. Which is why I accepted it. But the reason why I love it, and the reason why it's one of my favorite Star Wars movies, is because JJ and the other writers did such a good job at character development and giving us brand new characters in a universe that we actually wanted to know their stories and care about. Like I did not care about Luke, Leia, C three PO, R two, anything in. Force Awakens, like I, I was invested in Finn, Ray, Poe, all those people, mm -hmm. and BB-8, which is by BB-8 by far is the best droid in the Star Wars universe, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, and and then you know, so that's what makes that movie amazing. Last Jedi, on the on the other hand, it totally, like R R Ryan Rian, I don't know how you say his fucking Rian name, Johnson. He he his whole point was let go of the past let the past die like i think he saw what people were complaining about the force awakens how it was a bunch of fan service you know a basic copy of a new hope so what he tried to do was give you something different from that perspective i can respect his take on it i just think he did a bad job at achieving that goal you know i don't because if, if you're gonna make something new make something new don't make something new within the eighth episode of a nine movie saga yeah. That spanned the course of 40 fucking years. Yeah. You want to make something new, dude. 
that you know they sign him on for a trilogy, do like ten thousand years before, do like Knights of the Old Republic, do something with re- do anything. Yeah. Right, but don't do it in movie eight of the Skywalker saga. Yeah. No, I'm I'm with you. I mean, I think I think the big fail of Last Jedi, yeah, uh, you know, is is Superman Leia. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. The the stupid chase, the 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 Imperial cruisers, that which mm-hmm. is like, come on, there must have been a better solution than the, the slow chase. Yeah. And then of course, uh, the failure to really make Luke Skywalker an integral part of this new trilogy. Instead, and, uh, instead making him a, a deserter. And other sense. things, uh, there, there's other failures because J.J. Abrams went to some lengths to, we see where J.J. Abrams thought there were failures. Number one, Kylo Ren destroying his 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 mask, his helmet. Yes. Because it's the first thing he does in the new movie is reconstruct it. Yes. Uh, the character of Rose completely wiped out. I know. He didn't like Rose. At fairly. all. Uh, yeah. And that was one of my huge complaints about the last movie. I hated Rose. I, I, Absolutely you, detested Rose. I hated that scene in the planet. Uh, something else that obviously Abrams disagreed with, and I know Rian Johnson's let go of the past. He he brought in Lando almost right away. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and then gave a reason why no one showed up because I thought that was a huge problem that Leia put out the SOS and no one shows up. Yeah. So uh, he goes to explain it. So right there, I think those are some things. I think J.J. Abrams himself thought it was a mistake. Definitely Rose. Definitely yeah. destroying the mask and not involving Lando. I I, I agree. I agree hundred percent. Now let's let's now now that we've 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 uh recapped those those first two movies, I mean the overall third movie, I know you say you want to watch it again, but I enjoyed it. I thought I I wanna watch it again too, but I, I really enjoy I thought a lot about it afterwards. Like I had a hard time going to sleep because I just kept thinking about it, to be perfectly honest with you. Um uh, what what didn't you like about it? That's, this is not a movie I'm going to rate on whether uh, on whether I think it's good or not. Let's say uh, I enjoyed my time watching it. I think my son enjoyed it. He definitely enjoyed his time. There's a few times he wanted to clap, but I think he held back because you were there, and he knows that you would have squashed his joy. Um, <laughs> so he mostly enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed the movie. Um, I have my issues with it, though, man. I, I, I just never felt like I fully got involved. Really? Like it didn't fully bring me in. It was super fast paced, you know. Like it, it, it was, it, it moved around a lot. I mean, li- listen, the, the movie opens up, of course, with the crawl, but then the, literally showing Kylo Ren like on this like quest. Like, like that crawl was so. Man, that guy Ryan Johnson really fucked up the Star Wars saga. Yeah, it just shows that he ended eight almost like he ended the series. He did. If you watch, if you watch Last Jedi, it's like, oh, it's over. Yeah. Because yeah, J.J. It ends, Abrams... It ends, com- it ends with those two little kids yeah, like, yeah, oh, there's hope. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Because this crawl like, just had to invent some bullshit excuse for everything to restart again. Yeah. Which is, with the crawl, we find out Palpatine's alive. Yes. Right? And yeah. Palpatine, a message has gone out from Palpatine. Yeah. Um, so obviously Leia freaks out and for good reason. So that's the whole, the whole galaxy freaks out. Right. And Leia needs to freak out. Yeah. But then the fact that Kylo Ren needs to go find him to destroy him because he might be a threat to his power, that was a little weak. Why? It's like oh, He's like supreme leader. He's like running around bounty hunting people. Like, come on, dude. Come on. Yeah, but at the same time. It was weak. No, no. no I, I I could see that. You know, like Kylo Ren is well aware of Palpatine's fucking legacy and all this mm-hmm. shit like that. And if there's anyone that could stop Kylo Ren, it's Palpatine. You know? So, like, he's on a quest to go get him. So, th- that was the crawl, right? The crawl sets up why, what Kylo Ren is doing yeah. now, what the Resistance is doing now. And it and it, and it it opens up with Kylo literally on this quest to find It him. could be the start of a new set of movies. It was yeah. so ridiculous. To, to, to find so, him. So, right there, was I was I was a little put off by that because yeah. it reminded me of what a failure the last... Like, I was like, oh, fuck. I, I, it was hard for me to get into it right away just because of that. Because I was like, oh, what the fuck is this? I I had no problem getting right into it because it opened strong. It opened with Kylo kicking ass on a planet, and Kylo kicked ass. You know, yeah. used like used the force. I mean, we see Kylo Ren fight the way that we should always see Vader fight, which we never did. Sure, you know. Uh, and then he's he's going to get this compass, which apparently is a compass that guides you to the uh, the home world of the Sith. The home world of the Sith, which we've never seen, which was fucking badass. Yeah, I thought it was great, and uh, and. And we we get we see Emperor Palpatine like if, in the first five minutes it seems yeah 
like, right away. Right away. They don't waste yeah, any time. Yeah, this is time. not a spoiler. Like, um, and it's it, it it is some weird looking cloning facility. It looks like because yeah. we we see what's his name Snoke, like three or four different versions of Snoke. Snoke yeah, in like a a tube or whatever, or some shit like that. Right. And then Palpatine is connected to some machine. Machine like he can't walk on his own. He can't do anything on right. his own. I and he's blind. No. Yeah. Um. But. Is it his body? I don't even know. His hands are all fucked up and shit. Yeah, that was gross. Yeah, I, 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 I couldn't. I, I don't know. I don't know. And that, you know, not, not. And, and 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 he stays that way until he sucks out the force to power up his body, man. Dude, suck a dick. All right, listen. I'm just saying. Listen, I what what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say is like, you know, not to jump ahead and we'll get back into that, but they never really explained where Palpatine's from. How if it was a clone, if he survived 50 years before. Yeah. So, like, what I was hoping for, in all honesty, I was hoping for them to do a flashback to re- the end of Return of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. Death Star blows up, you know, Palpatine falls down, and we see what the fuck happens to him. Mm-hmm. You know, if anything, or how his... Whatever. Like, and then go back to present day. Is it this, It's almost like he needed an episode 8 to set all this up. Which is why they should have had episode ten. But anyways, Star Wars X, it would have been great, dude. Mm. Yeah, um, and and everyone would have bought into it too. Everyone would have been down. There's not one person that would have been like, "It needs to be a trilogy." No. You know. Anyways, so uh, Kylo meets the Emperor, and the Emperor's like, "Listen, you got to go kill Rey. I have this huge fleet that I've been building that's going to be yours for the final order, not the first order, but the final order." Uh, Kylo sees the fleet. Kylo sees the threat. So Kylo. You know, quickly and easily is like okay, and, and and it's probably not just called the final order because it's the name of of the army, but the final order is to kill the last Jedi. Yeah, that's his final order. Order. Yeah, like Order sixty six, like whatever. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, and then and then finally finally we get to the it goes to the resistance, right? The yeah, yeah and yeah. Ray's training, Ray's training, and Leia is training. Yeah, Leia's training run. Leia had a lot more screen time than I thought she was going to, considering she's not alive in real life. Let me life. tell you something, man. We're a lot closer than I thought. To what? Th- that shit looked real as fuck, dude. It was her. It was it was unused footage from Last oh, Jedi. thank God. Yes. I thought it was like a fucking hologram. I was like, what no. the fuck? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck no, no. is this? No, they, 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 said, they said that after Carrie Fisher passed away that they were not going to Grand Moff Tarkin her the way they did in Rogue, oh, thank him God. in Rogue One. Uh, even though they ended up doing it, spoilers, guys, because when they showed her younger self yeah, training. Yeah, the Force Ghost. And they also showed the Force Ghost. It was clearly a CGI version of her like yeah. they did in Rogue One. Um, but, uh, but she... Uh, She's training Ray, and you know you could almost tell though, you could almost tell that the that the that it it wasn't actual real dialogue in the moment because like, you know, Leia was very vague. Her sentences were re- weird and cryptic. It was you could tell it was like weird mm-hmm. stuff that just didn't match up. They were just trying to fit dialogue around right. existing footage, right. you know. But it did look great. They got yeah. rid of the background. They did like like. They they really did really well done. There. It was an expensive thing to keep Carrie Fisher in the movie for sure. Uh, so it's Carrie Fisher's training Ray and blah blah blah, and uh, and and then they talk about hey we got the message because uh, all the all while that's happening we see Poe and Finn on the Millennium Falcon getting a message from uh, a mole in the First Order, mm-hmm. and and they come back and the message is, hey guys, Palpatine's alive. Yeah, 16 hours, he's going to start destroying worlds. Yeah, so so holy crap, we have to find the Emperor, but the Emperor's on a planet, a Sith planet that's not even in a system, and blah, 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 and then Rey sees the Jedi text, which she stole from last Jedi, and they kept that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, so they got to find the Sith compasses, and uh, one of them, Kylo Ren had, and the other one was at this, this other hunter on this other like planet that we've never seen before right they go to this planet okay and literally it's like coachella in space yeah like there's a festival happening and shit like that um and uh all the while kylo and ray still have that weird connection which mm-hmm. we saw in less jedi they yeah. kept that yeah. too uh where they can like talk to each other and like almost touch each other even though they're not in the same space 
Uh, and Kylo actually takes something off Ray, finds out where she is from whatever the fuck, and then they go and they chase her, and uh, and they capture Chewie and a couple other people. Who did, did, did they capture Ray? No. no, Chewie at first. They captured Chewie at first, and they they get this and they get this dagger that that says where it is, and C three PO's with them for n- no good goddamn reason, by the way. It's such a pointless. Pointless like, in this movie. The fact that C three PO came on their quest makes no sense. You know, you know what it is. I think, All he does is walk slow. I think it's Anthony Daniels, like saying, like, "Hey, like, I'm one of the original people. Like, hey, I want to be in this movie. Like, hey, show me some love." Which, by the way, Anthony Daniels showed up as an X wing pilot later on in the final scene in his actual human form. Did you see that? Mm-hmm. It's almost like he was like JJ. I've never. Can I be in like? Can I be myself? Oh, you just reminded me of a horrible part of the movie, man. Um. Anyways, so C-3PO reads the script because, of course, he's a protocol droid and knows all the stuff, but he can't he can't uh, translate it because it's against his programming to translate Sith language. So they have to go to this other planet to uh, to like hack him, basically. And, Super cute thing. And and the guy that hacks him, like you would, you were all about that. That guy. shit was adorable, man. You he, he looked like a, he looked like something on Men in Black. Yeah, but it was super adorable. And was like, in the way he talked, like, yeah. He was actually speaking English. Was he? Yeah. I didn't understand a thing yeah, he said. I understood it all. What did he say? Huh? I don't remember now. The movie was last night, but yeah. Are you sure? Was when, you, when you watch it again, really pay attention. Really? Yeah. yeah. I didn't pick up on that at all. Yeah. But it was like weird talk. Like, Mammy, go bye-bye. Oh, uh, really? I should like, yeah. I didn't pick that up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he said it's w- the weird accent, and it was like, you know. So. Yeah. While they're on this planet, uh, uh, Poe comes in contact uh, with a former uh, Love co- interest. colleague. Love interest. Who, which I guess was a love interest as well. So all, for all you people that thought Poe and Finn were like lovers, that's out the door. That mm-hmm. didn't happen. Okay. Uh, Poe didn't know that was a thing. Oh yeah, people were talking about that in the internet like crazy. Like they were like Poe and Finn need to kiss already. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that was the thing. Uh, and then uh, so they uh, they 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 translate the stuff and he says where it is and um, uh. Did they say where it is? Did C-3PO reveal the, the no. location? No. Oh, he said where, where where the compass was. Yeah. Compass is on a moon of Endor, guys, and the Return of the Jedi uh, in 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 the old wreckage of the Death Star. So. And this time they, they also, with the whole Chewie getting captured was kind of pointless because at this time they do a rescue mission for Chewie up in, in, uh, in Kylo's... Uh, Ship. Ship and yeah, that's before they go to the moon of Endor. To they get the they go to rescue them. I mean, the only plot point I guess that was there is we find out who the mole was. Hux, yeah, Hux, which was great. That was a great. That was that really was a good twist. that was awesome. Uh, and, and and not because he wanted to help for selfish, he just purely hates selfish reasons. Kylo he Ren. hates Kylo Ren. Yeah, uh, ends yeah. up getting killed because of it. And he gets. I didn't pick up on this until later on in the movie, but the guy that kills him is a general that's above Hux now. Yeah, because Hux was the number one guy. It was right. Kylo and Hux, and now this new general is number one ahead of him. And it's the same guy that ran the Death Star in Return of the Jedi. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because remember when he's talking mm. to the Emperor, he goes, I served you before. I'm, I'll serve you again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, they mount this rescue mission for Shui. There's more Kylo Ray stuff. They go to the planet where the crashed Death Star is. There's a fight with Kylo and Ray, and I'm going through this what, because what, what, just, we're in, we're introduced to the horses that everyone was talking yeah, shit the about. Horses, uh, who, it's yeah, like, which whatever. Yeah. Um, so you have like Kylo and Ren have a fight there. Finn goes, does his Finn yelling thing. Yeah. Um, the fight with Kylo and Ray was good. She finds the uh, the compass and encounters a version of a dark version of herself of herself, which yeah. is where we saw. Her with the with the um, Darth Maul lightsaber, right. and we were all like, "What the fuck?" Well, and that convinces her to go to Luke's uh, planet, uh, yeah. where he was in the last movie. I guess they kept that as well. Yeah, to also retire. Yeah, because she's like, "I'm afraid. I don't. I don't. I don't want to encounter." Oh, and, and and granted, so before she goes to Chewie, there's there's this pretty cool scene. Uh, I I need to rewind a little bit because it was really awesome. Uh, she senses, I guess, Kylo before after they found the compass before they leave, and Kylo's coming on his ship. And she jumps over and cuts off the wing. And then they start fighting over the transport where she believes Chewie is in. And she uses force fucking lightning and blows up the ship. Yes. Which is immediately Sith, Sith making powers, yeah. her one of the most powerful fucking Jedi already, right? Yeah. Like, that's force lightning is not an easy thing to do. Yeah, you didn't like that. Huh? You didn't like that, did you? 
No. Yeah. Like it, it because like it instantly makes you like just so much more powerful than almost any Jedi we've ever seen. Yeah. So uh and I think that's a big deal. Yeah. Big deal because by the end of the movie, like we're we're led to believe. I mean, we're not led to believe, but you have to assume that that Ray is the most powerful Jedi that's ever existed. Yes. But we'll get to that. Yes. So they mount the rescue and all that, and we and now she's she's uh, so, wait, wait, wait. banished herself to this. Well, well hold on. Before island. before that, she did. She was fighting Kylo Ren. She killed him basically. Sure. And she, she stabbed she, him, and then she healed him. Again, like which which listen, if you guys have been watching the Mandalorian spoilers, Yoda heals also, and apparently we find out in this movie that by by healing, you take your life force, a part of your life force out of you and give it right. to someone else. Right. Yes. Which I guess is important to the end of the movie. It, it's very important, which, yeah. So, um, and so then, you know, Ray's like, fuck this, I got to get out of here. But wait, did she find out who she is by then? Did they reveal her lineage before she goes see Luke? I think Kylo tells her, no? I think Kylo tells her, yeah. Spoilers, guys, but uh, she's a Palpatine. She's, what do you think? I hate it. The granddaughter of, of Emperor Palpatine. I can't stand it. I don't like it one bit, one bit, because two reasons. Okay, listen. First of all, Sith don't fuck. Jedi don't. No, none of them do. Like they just, they just don't. Okay, they don't. <laughs> Does this set up maybe the the fact that we're gonna get ourselves uh, an Obi Wan kid? No, because Obi Wan would never do that. Obi Wan's celibate. You know. Well. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 First of all, second thing. Okay. All right, if she's the granddaughter and his son was her father, why did they make him out to be like a fucking bitch from Tatooine? You saw like the footage of him giving up Ray or whatever and like running away and shit like that. Like he looked like a regular dude. Wouldn't he have Sith powers? Maybe it skips a generation. No, it doesn't because you have you have you have Anakin, Vader, I mean Anakin, Luke, Kylo. I don't know. Ben. You know? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's, 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 I need to know more there. And we're never going to know. It's it just, I don't like that. At all. The fact that she's a Palpatine, I was like, that part I hated. I was like, fuck you. Fuck you, Star Wars. I knew it, it was a misdirect that she was, no, I told you that she was someone important. That's kid. one thing, that's one thing I loved about The Last Jedi is, is Kylo was like, you're nobody. Your parents are nobody. It doesn't matter. I was like, thank you. Thank you. It doesn't matter. Well, Look, I always thought that she was going to end up being Obi-Wan, but she was definitely going to be connected yeah, somehow. Nobody knows who Obi-Wan's f- parents are. Nobody knows who Yoda's parents are. Nobody knows. Like, why does why, why do we need to know everybody's parents? You don't. It's possible that you just... Oh. I mean, this is called... It's a Skywalker saga. Yeah, but she's not a Skywalker. But it's... Very, she, Palpatine's very importantly tied into the legacy of the Skywalkers. I get it, but he doesn't need kids, okay? I'm, right. I'm, I'm, reason, I'm with the it. The only reason why the Skywalker family exists is because Anakin betrayed the Jedi and betrayed the the the, the rules of the Jedi. The rules of the Jedi were you can you, you do not get involved with another person. You do not fall in love because love it it makes you weak. It clouds it clouds your judgment. You know you cannot do I you you cannot <laughs> you cannot be be, be clear minded and like a Jedi needs to be if you are if tied down by the perils of of love. You know? I believe before I had my kids, I was almost Jedi-like. Wow. My ex-wife destroyed me. But <laughs> she was a Sith? Yeah, yeah man. Uh, but so so uh, the fact that Palpatine has a granddaughter, I was like, fuck you. Fuck you, Star Wars. Anyway, so, yes. She goes to Luke's planet, okay, and Force Luke comes up. And basically, you know, she's like, I'm here to make sure none of this happens. I'm going to live in exile the same way you did. And Luke admits that, hey, I came here out of fear. Force goes Luke. Force goes Luke. Decides to show up. Yeah. And have a conversation with her. Yeah. I I came here out of fear. I made a mistake. Didn't like it. Yeah. Why? I didn't like it. They had to explain why he was such a bitch in Last Jedi. Yeah. I didn't like it. You know? I didn't like it. Now, at the same time, Kylo Ren looks like he's about to give up. He's all confused. Uh, oh, by the way, he loses a battle because Leia reaches out to him. 
Yeah, Leia reaches out to him. Well, the reason Ray was able to beat him was because yeah. Leia reached out to him. Yeah. It took the rest of her life before she dies. Yeah. Uh, Ray brought him back to life and left, right? So he's left there, and he's all, like, fucked up. Yeah. Like, Ray brought him back to life using her own life force. His mother just reached out to him, told him she loved him, dies. Yeah. Uh, he's finally alone. He's contemplating what to do, and Force Ghost Han shows up. Not Force Ghost, just Han Solo. Just Han Solo. Yeah, but it's in his mind. It's in his mind. Oh, and okay. Kylo says that. He right. he recognizes that. He's like, he goes, you're just in my mind. You're just a memory. Yeah, so Han shows up. And they they re they almost they almost identically reenact the moment in Force Awakens when they confront each other. Sure. They, they say almost the same dialogue, too. But we see right. it play out. In a different way. way. Right. Yes. Which, as opposed to loose conversation with Ray, I thought was fantastic. Han Solo. Yeah. I was all about it, dude. And it's, all about it. it's the beginning of his redemption arc. Yes. Now, here's my thing. Again, I understand because the, the movie, they had a certain amount of time. Yeah. Man, over the course of two movies, like, if, if this movie was just two movies, right, and given, like, a good, like, four or five hours, mm -hmm. it would have been so much better. That moment was really important, dude, really yeah. well done, really yeah. emotional. Mm -hmm. um, it was perfect, right, yes. reenacting the first, right? Yeah. But it happened too fast, and it was sandwiched between so much action that we skip to and from that you you couldn't that's my problem There's could, not, there wasn't a lot of development you know? i couldn't i couldn't yeah. invest into the movie because they didn't give you time to deal with the emotions yeah that the movie was causing and that was probably to me the most emotional scene in the movie yeah i agree especially also because looking at harrison ford holy shit yeah yeah like no yeah. guys if you need his autograph you better hurry <laughs> but but uh, he, he, I, and, and it starts his redemption arc we can tell instantly he he throws his Badass fucking lightsaber. Yeah. Away, into, gone. Away and gone. gone. Basically renouncing the Sith. Yes. And right. and in my mind, I'm like, Rise of Skywalker. Here yeah. we go. Yeah. It, it's Kylo. An actual Kylo Skywalker. is the Rise of Skywalker. Good. Care and, and in my mind, I'm like, okay, this movie's going to end. Kylo's going to be, they're going to keep this shit going. Because yeah. he's a Skywalker. The Skywalker saga does not end with episode nine. Right. That's what I was thinking. I was all about that shit. So, friggin', um, you know, Luke's explaining he was a coward on oh, his on his on his on his island. We're doing a Star yeah. Wars review, so if you don't want to hear spoilers, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, you know, you know, Luke Luke was just like, hey, you know, explaining his cowardice from Last Jedi and stuff like that. Which, by the way, they they ruined Luke Skywalker in these three movies. They really did. You know, he wasn't in Force Awakens except for like the last minute, so we can't do shit there. And I don't think JJ JJ could do anything in this movie because of what happened to him in the second movie yeah it's a shame because luke skywalker really was you know one of the top heroes and they really made him out to be just well know. i never liked him yeah well whatever anyways um so ray decides to rejoin the fight luke luke does a little raise of his x-wing sh shot back to empire strikes back you know uh, and and Ray takes his light his X wing and goes to to fight Palpatine. No, before she does that, they 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 all they all get back together on the Rebel planet where the Rebel base is. They find out Leia passed away. Chewie like Chewie was more upset in this movie than he was in Force Awakens when Han died. Yeah, <laughs> it seemed like Chewie was just like Ugh! because you could tell Chewie was like like everybody I love is now dead. Right. Everybody I cared about, like 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 Han died, and like it, it was gut wrenching. But I still had Leia, and now Leia's gone too. Right, you know, and Leia was an extension of Han. Sure, you know, like and even the, like that's what I got out of it, you know. Anyway, so they're like, um, but Ray's already on his own, and so these guys get a signal, and they realize that Ray is broadcasting the signal of where she's going letting them know so they can follow the path yeah which by the way they they already got the coordinates because of the little droid that they mm -hmm. stole um which it was like whatever i yeah, didn't care for that cute droid. droid yeah the droids are good droid, droids are cute uh and so ray's on her way to the sith planet you know basically takes the same path kylo took in the beginning of the movie um and uh and then the rebel fleet gets together and they sent La they sent Lando who showed up. Yeah, Lando and the Millennium Falcon with because Chewie. Because Poe becomes the general. Yeah, you know? Poe becomes the general. And and uh, they send they send Chewie, Lando, and the Millennium Falcon to go gather other to recruit people from, people. from right. around the galaxy to come help because they don't have enough reinforcements 
in the actual um, rebel fleet. Um, so they're getting ready to go to the Sith planet uh, to take down the Final Order fleet, which is massive, by the way. Massive. Yes. And each one has planet-killing technology. Yes, it's a lot of shit that Palpatine did hooked up to a machine over the course of 50 years. It's probably less than 50 years. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know. I know. It's a little unbelievable. So Ray gets to the planet and... Uh, like so many. Like they could have had like 50, but it looked like they had thousands. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Like make it like 25. And they were That's, all... They were all fully staffed, yeah. by the way. <laughs> 25 would have been super impressive. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were all fully staffed, like, with with, with everybody. Like, no. where where did these people come from? And how are they feeding them off the I, Sith planet? I don't know. I don't know. Because that place is desolate. That place looked like, I don't know who would Like a be giant there. white storm. Yeah. Like, dark storm, should I say. But, uh, so, so, so Ray encounters Palpatine. And this is when we really see, like, that he's attached to this, like, mechanism. It like, looked awesome. Yeah, like, he's not even, like, he, he's immobile. He's just, It's like holding him up. It's like he's so frail, this thing is holding him he's, up. He's, he's nothing. Yeah. You know, it's just his voice and his and his mouth moving. Which and, they nailed. Yeah, well, of course. Yeah. Ian and Dermot, I think his name is. He looked, it looked good. Legit. Yeah, it looked yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and so, oh, wait. Oh. so, 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 you know, we're trying not to spoil it for yeah. customers. Keep coming. I know, I know. So she, she she comes in though, and like he literally like explains to her like his plan and all the stuff like that, and 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 the lineage and and he, what he wants her to do is to strike him down because apparently he has like every Sith that ever existed living within him. And and so how do you feel about that? Because we know the original trilogy was the Bible, right? Oh, and oh, all of a sudden, well, are we talking about four, five, six? Yeah. Okay. And all of a sudden, it's fucking Highlander. I've never seen Highlander. So in Highlander, when a Highlander kills another Highlander, the only way to kill them is by cutting off their head. And then what happens is you take their power. It goes in you. Oh, okay. And so that's why it says there can be only one because you have to kill all the other Highlanders. And once you're the last Highlander, you're completely powerful because you have the power of all the Highlanders. So apparently the Sith are Highlanders. Well, apparently so are the Jedi. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but anyways, uh, before we get there, so Palpatine is basically saying, like, look, my, my body ain't shit. I can't be, you know, I can't do anything in this physical form. But you are in pristine condition. Strike me down. My life force will go into you as, long, as well as all the other Sith. And we will rule the galaxy as one. But basically, he's so powerful, he will overtake her own consciousness. And it will basically be him in Ray's body. And right. apparently they're in this like arena, by the way, which is filled with a bunch of like people that live Acolytes. on the Sith planet. They're not Sith. No, no. But they no. but they live they live on the Sith planet. Mm -hmm. Um so she's like, I'm not I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna strike you down and do all that stuff. It, it's weird. He he was talking to her in almost the same way that he was talking to Luke in Return of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. Like, strike me down and then take your place on the dark side. Like that's what happens, you know? So you know, whatever. All the meanwhile, while this is happening, um, Ben is on his way to the to the planet, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and he he shows up in like a, a a Tie Fighter that he stole or some shit like that. Uh, which how he got off the Death Star in the middle of the ocean <laughs> and right. uh, and how he you know whatever maybe maybe he landed the Tie Fighter on the Death Star. Who knows? We don't know. No. Anyways, but e either way, uh, he. Uh, he shows up, and the Knights of Ren, which we didn't even talk about, because because they were non-issue again. They were just like they were like minions. In they didn't the have time, and I wish they would have because their character design was amazing. Yes, uh, they looked really cool. Yeah, we're just supposed to assume that they're like gangsters and or thugs that Kylo was a part of at one time, and now like doing like stuff. They talk about it briefly, but not enough to really get into right. it. I think. I think Last Jedi would have delved into that a lot more if J.J. was in charge. Yes, sure. because it was set up that way. Yeah. But either way, so um, uh, so um, Kylo shows up. The Knights of Ren are, like, hiding in the corners, and they come to, like, get his ass, right? And he starts fighting them, and they're actually, like, getting one up on him. Yeah. You know? Like, like they're outnumbering him, like, five to one, something like that. Six to one. And, and he has... 
he has no weapon, he has nothing, so he's usually just using his force powers and like his fists. Right. Uh but Kylo and Ray have that weird connection to where they know can see and touch each other even though they're not sharing the same physical space. She like has two lightsabers. Uh one was Because one was Luke's and the other one we found out was Leia's. Was Leia apparently Luke was training her to be a Jedi. Yes, which we saw a flashback scene of that. Which it did which it digi- digitally CGI Leia. What do you think of that? I would have loved to see more of that. I thought it was fantastic. I thought yes. it was it was great. Yeah. Uh, and so apparently there was a prophecy or something or she saw into her future uh, and she knew she was going to have a child and the way for that child to be saved was for her to not be a Jedi or to put down her weapon or something. So yeah, she laid down her, her lightsaber and I guess that was the end of her Jedi career. Uh, Luke gives that lightsaber to... Uh, to Ray, yeah, which was so she has two lightsabers. Elegant, nice looking. Yeah, it was really nice. Saber, nice yeah. lightsaber. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, uh, so she does her little thing, and 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 Kylo senses it and grabs the lightsaber. Grabs that was Luke, awesome. Gra- grabs Luke's lightsaber. Man, we, we needed a movie with both of these. Oh, God, they were so good. Um, and uh, and he takes out the Knights of Ren like fast. Yeah, once he has that lightsaber, like that guy's proficient with that shit. We could have seen more, but there's not enough time. Yeah. Again. Like you said, squeezing a bunch into a little bit of time. Too much. And then, so he comes, and it's basically him and Ray confronting Palpatine. And like, hey, we're here to take you out. And it's funny because apparently there are absolutely no match whatsoever, even against a decrepit Palpatine, because he instantly freezes them. Freezes them and then sucks, sucks life their life force, force out of them. And grows. Yeah, and yeah, his hands come back to normal. His eyesight comes back. Baby Yoda. Um and uh, I guess that's what sucking the life and, force and, out of Jedi's and, and, does, and, huh? And he's draining them them literally of their life force. So, and then they they're both down, and now Palpatine's talking to like all the people in the audience and blah blah blah. And it looks like he's. Gonna and I don't remember the sequence, but I think um, Ben gets blown into a hole when well, he tries bef- to bef- fight before he does that. So like like Ray's still out, but Ben gets back up. Like he's like I'm still here. And, like, he comes at him, and Palpatine just, like, literally just, like, later, dude. You know? Right. At this point, there's the the good guys get reinforcement who are trying to fight these ships. Mm-hmm. I didn't care about that whole thing. Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I didn't, th- but the whole time, there's a fight, right? Well, the obvious yeah, fight yeah, because, is that. Well, because they're saying that, you know, the fleet needs to take off. And once they take off, like, it's the end of the, at the, end of the universe. Right. Because they have planet killing devices. The, the final order will be unstoppable. There's nothing right. you can do about it. And their shields will be up. Right now, their shields are down. They're on planet, blah, blah, blah. Right. They're, they're vulnerable. They're vulnerable. Um, so, of course, there's a dog fight happening. You can't have a Star Wars movie without a fucking dog fight, apparently. It was boring. I didn't yeah. care about what was happening. Um, there's parts with Finn. Horses make an appearance. I, yeah. don't, I don't care. Yeah. I didn't care. Yeah, just show I, me. You know what? By this movie, I just don't care for Poe as a character, man. For Poe? Yeah. Finn? Poe. Poe. I think Finn was way better in this movie than he was in, in the other two. Yeah. I liked him a lot more in this one, right? Um, I don't, there's something about him that I liked him in this one. He I liked him, like, I liked him in the Force He didn't seem like such a bitch. Like, like what they made him what they made him in the in the second one? Yeah. Like no, he seemed more sure of himself, you know, yeah. wasn't like a coward. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I really didn't care. They brought the the woman back from the planet from the Endor type planet. Mm-hmm. Uh, they brought her back to fight alongside him. Um, sent Rose away again in the first 2 minutes, thank God. And uh, I just didn't care what was happening up there. Yeah. Whatsoever. Anyways, they're getting their asses kicked. Uh, but guess who shows up? Lando with eight billion ships. Yeah, tons. Tons, tons. Like, they couldn't do that in The Last Jedi, could they, right? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so they're yeah. starting to turn things around. And then, and then w- after Palpatine sucks out the life force, holy shit, uses force lightning like on to a dis- scale we've never seen. Right. To disable every goddamn ship it's in the air. It's basically like an EMP sure. in the sky. Yeah. It knocks everything out. You know? And so they're all falling to their death. Which now the all of they're all so just falling. most powerful Sith ever. Yeah. More and easily. So Ray gets up, you know, she you know, she's a little delayed after Kylo Ren. She gets up to come take him on. And uh and you know, Palpatine's doing his thing and he stops. The lightning thing, which puts the ships back doing their thing, and he goes to go after Ray, you know, 
and he's putting force light on her. She's holding the lightsaber up, similar to like what. Well, she hears all the voice of the, he. She well, hears the voice be, of Luke. Well, before that, but it, and so she's holding it up, and then she starts hearing she, Luke and literally every Jedi that we've ever like met. Right. Like I heard, you know, I heard Luke. I heard Yoda. I heard Yoda. I heard Sam Jackson. Samuel Jackson. Was I heard. There. I, I heard. Mace I, Windu. I, I heard. I heard Anakin. Mm-hmm. You know, they they brought Hayden in for that stuff. I heard Obi Wan. Yeah. You know. Both Obi Wan's, and I think this was. Uh, a, I, I told you after the movie. I think it was a huge missed moment, right? So after they encourage her, right, she pulls out a second the the Leia's lightsaber, yes, and unites Luke's and Leia's lightsaber to battle the Force lightning, which is obviously super powerful. Now, they they keep saying that all the Jedi are behind her. There was a really emotional line. I thought that was really well done. That climax, right. Where where he says I'm all the Sith and she's like well I'm all the Jedi yeah I thought that was awesome dude like that was a really a moment to cheer right yeah um which no one this is the first Star Wars movie I've seen in a theater where no one cheered and that it. was a cheer where I was waiting because I wanted yeah. to cheer but then yeah. I didn't want to be the only one because yeah. I was like holy shit that's so well written yeah. right yeah. um here's where they missed it man I I I would have loved to seen all the Force ghosts behind her and all the Sith behind him yeah. And, like, have all the Force ghosts, like, giving her Force powers or whatever. And all the Sith behind him. It would have been, sh- been a cool moment to see Maul. Maybe, like, a mock-up or even. Like, some yeah. that, that we might not have seen, right? And a moment to see Yoda there and all of them. And a redeemed Anakin. I would love right? to see Anakin. Like, everyone's, yeah. like, hating on Hayden. I, w- I would love to see Hayden yeah. could show up, dude. And I think uh, they missed a, a chance. But anyways, even though they missed an opportunity I thought would have been really cool, it was really well done. It was, yes. And and she literally ends up, like, overtaking him and disintegrating him to dust. Yeah. yeah he definitely leaves no room to believe that this guy survives this. Yeah, yeah. No, no he can survive that. that fall, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. Apparently, he survived yeah. that, but he does not survive this. He melts. But it pretty much knocks her out. Like, she's, it kills her in a sense. Yes. Right? And so Kylo crawls out of his hole comes and and uh and i was at this point i was happy i was like yes she's literally dead she's dead ray is i mean i mean i mean kylo's alive he's the rise of skywalker I was he's like, the last skywalker I was like, yes yes this is so good but then i'm thinking in my head i'm like how's he gonna explain the poe and finn who know nothing about yeah what's been ray, going on yeah going on they're gonna like like ray needs to come back to life to 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 like let them know so he can be okay um and so what he does is he uses his life force to bring her back to life meaning he Uh, has to die well not necessarily but he's had so much drained of him yeah that he there's nothing left in him and uh and so what happens is they 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 share a kiss um shocked i wasn't shocked there was always a weird love tension between them, I thought. But they created too many love tension. Like, it was like her and Finn then, like... I never saw her and Finn. Yeah, but it was always, like, weird. At uh, one point, her and Poe, even. I know. Yeah, it was weird. I don't know. A very F- loving... Force love? Very loving I group. Like, I have friends, and yeah. we just, like, make fun of each other. Yeah. That's just weird. Um, and, uh... And then he disintegrates, and yeah. then Leia's body disintegrates, which was nice, like you like you do in the Force world, which was nice because like she was waiting for her son. Yeah, um, and then uh, that's it. They live happily ever after. They go back to that rebel base, and everyone's cheering. And well, you know, first she goes to bury the. Uh, well, that's how the movie ends. Yeah, actually. but they they go back, they cheer. It's kind of like the end of Return of the Jedi. It was where like they show all the different planets. Which, by the way, we saw know. Ewoks. We saw Ewoks, which I I love Ewoks. I I I thought it was a cool. I thought it was cool. I actually. thought you hate Ewoks. I do hate Ewoks. Oh, I loved that. I, loved I was, but it was a surprising little like yeah. throwback moment, and I was th- well done. The the thing I didn't like about the end when everyone's cheering is like, okay, so you have all the all the Imperial uh, ships like falling to their death, right? And like everyone's like, yeah, but I told you this the other day, yesterday. It's like, it's like if I see something like that crash into my planet, I'm like, ah, because mm-hmm. like it's gonna kill us. Yeah. Like we're like, hello, there's nothing good about a giant imperial ship falling, right? You know, but whatever. Um, so everyone's celebrating the end of the first order, like like balance is restored to the galaxy. Um, the movie ends with us going back to Tatooine, back mm-hmm. to Luke 
Aunt Beru's uh, and Uncle Owen's uh, little ranch, I guess you could say, where we saw Luke in A New Hope, where Anakin also was in Attack of the Clones. And uh, she goes back. It's deserted. There's no one there. It's filled with sand, pretty much. And uh, she ends up burying the lightsabers, uh, Luke's and Leia's lightsaber. And then uh, some scavenger, I guess, or whatever, um, nomad just comes up and says, you know, who are you? It's deserted here. She's like, I'm Ray. And she's like, Ray who? And she thinks about it. She sees Luke's and Leia's force ghost. Mm -hmm. And uh, and she's like, you know, Ray Skywalker. And then she reveals her golden lightsaber, which I did not know this. Your son said is... Somehow my son knew. And what is it? Uh, it's the lightsaber to the temple guard. To the temple guard, the Jedi temple guard. The gem Jedi temple guard. Yeah. So... There you have Where it. Where the fuck she found that lightsaber? Who knows? Maybe she made a new one. I don't know. Maybe mm. she's that powerful. I don't know. It was it was very like industrial looking. It was black. It had like mm -hmm. a switch on it and shit like that. And then, but it was good. It was good. You know, movie ended and I was like, fuck good. Lawrence Kasdan did not write the movie or the screenplay. Oh, Snap dies. Snap Wexley. You were so upset about that. Yeah. Why? It was like so because, dude, there's something about all these unceremonious deaths in Star Wars that bother me. Mm. It didn't bother me at all. Like when Akbar gets like just blown out of the fucking thing in the last movie. I love that shit. But it was just so like casual. It's real. No, it's not real. <laughs> no, Poe was upset. He was like, no. Nah. Ah. You weren't upset at all. Not at all. All right. Not at all. Uh, you bad people. Uh, you know. There's a, there's a, there are things like again, I, I, I don't like Ray being a Palpatine. I don't like the fact that the Death Star destruct, the Death Star, you know, wreckage fell to a planet and the planet still exists and there's living things on it because that would create extinction level events, you know. Well, to be fair, the only living things that were there was that, that woman and that group of people. Which, the horses, right. Maybe yeah. they brought them from when they had a scout on fire. You no, know? I don't know, and and I don't, you know. I don't like the fact that they didn't explain Palpatine's resurrection or rise or I just, you know what they just didn't have time maybe to do it without it seeming like clunky exposition. I think that was important I mean, though. Maybe... I think that was important. You have to talk about Palpatine and how the fuck he's there. You know what? Maybe they're gonna give it to us in in one of the Disney shows. Maybe, maybe, but because I mean the the whole fact that Palpatine had has clones. Um, before Marvel took back, uh, it was it had been used in in all the yeah. it had been used in the extra stuff, right? In the comics, yeah, and yeah. so the fact that he had clones around like that that's not a surprise, right? It's just not currently canon. So maybe they explain it in in something else. Like maybe they'll explain it in the Mandalorian eventually. I don't know. I don't know. The, uh, maybe the Mandalorian will deal with the rise of this Palpatine. A lot of questions still, but either way, either way, good, good, good movie. It's definitely, you know, I'm thinking about it, and I gotta watch it again. But as of right now, if I were to say, it's it's my third favorite Star Wars movie. No, I'm just telling. That's my opinion. Fuck off. Yeah. I mean, there's not a lot of Star Wars movies, so there's like there's like nine or ten. I think it was enjoyable. No, there's more than that. There's like twelve. Eleven. No, there's the nine movies that came out plus Rogue One and Han Solo. Han Solo. Oh yeah, you're right. Eleven. Um, I thought it was enjoyable. I thought it was a nice close. Uh, I really liked, I ended up loving Ray, which I hate in the first movie. Now she's one of my favorite characters. Yeah. Uh, her development was really well written. Yeah. Uh, I thought Kylo Ren's redemption arc was great. fucking fantastic. Kylo's great. Uh, I think Kylo is great. I also yeah. hated him at, at first and... He's just well written, so dude, when he when he took that the the, the general and mm -hmm. like 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 oh, not only not only not only choked him like but like slammed him to the roof. Yeah. I was like, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I I think, uh, and even though I appreciated a lot of the fan service, I appreciated the the little stuff like the Ewoks, right? Like yeah. stuff like that. What I I didn't appreciate I, the the things I didn't like about this movie, man. I hate to say to CP three C three PO. Uh, I thought C-3PO was just a waste. Um, I think... Uh, Chewbacca. 
I didn't care for it. No, I like Chewie. Um, I, I thought the, Chewie was all, good. all these people were in there. It was unnecessary. Chewie was necessary, I think. Chewie, Chewie and the Falcon were necessary. Lando, unnecessary. Yeah, I, and I understand why he's there, but I, I was okay yeah. with Lando because he wasn't in every scene like C three PO. C three PO, I swear to God, I think in real life Anthony Daniels was like, "Give me my opportunity. I am C three PO. Like I should be." You know, come on, you know. Yeah. So. But you know, you you you're shitting on C three PO, but you laughed at all his fucking lines, dude. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. You laughed a lot. No. Yeah, you did. Was C three PO when? Yeah. A b- bunch when he would say a bunch of things, you were laughing. I heard you. I don't know, man. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I was laughing at that cute little thing that was fixing him. Yeah. Maybe that's why. I don't know. Whatever. Anyways, guys. I mean. Like you said, good close to the thing. I'm I'm, of, I'm, I'm sad. Listen, I'm, I'm a little sad. I'm, I'm like I'm like ah. Oh. I'll tell you what, dude. Um, as as a, as the story of the Skywalker goes, uh, Luke, Leia, um, I'm I'm completely satisfied. I think J J Abrams created a good ending. I think it was as good as it could probably have been after Episode Eight, uh, when it comes to like bringing everything around and closing the Skywalker saga. I think it's a really good send off, and I think it's a satisfying conclusion to to everything we've seen about the you know uh, the Skywalkers. I agree, but I don't think it's as good of an ending as Return of the Jedi. No, it's not. Return of the Jedi really does end the movie perfectly. You don't need any more Star Wars after Return of the Jedi. No, you don't. But the thing is, you don't need any more Skywalker's story after this. You don't, like, you understand Leia, Luke, it's all closed. We're done. There's no loose strings whatsoever. This movie closed every story. Which I, I, I don't That like. deals with the Skywalkers, yes. though, right? Because we can continue to see what happens with Rey, right? Maybe they're not called Jedis from now on. They're Skywalkers, you know? Um, we can continue to see what happens with Rey and rebuilding the, the Jedi Order. If that's what um, she does. You know, Lando kind of hinted that this one girl that they introduced, that there's going to be more Star Wars story about her in a quest to find out who she is, right? Um, so there's still stories that could be told. Uh, now it's General Poe, I guess. Like, there's still stories that could be told about the characters that aren't from the original trilogy. Yeah. Um, but everything that deals with everything from the original trilogy, I feel, came to a good conclusion. There's nothing left. It did. It did. The only, and the only thing that they made a big deal about that we've never seen in any other Star Wars movie was the life force and sucking it out of you. And, like, it was a big plot point in this movie. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what does that mean for future now and stuff? And why didn't we see it before? And I, there was this... I still loved it though. I, it's my number three favorite Star Wars movie as of right now. Yeah, I think I, I think it was really good. I want to watch it again before I before I determine its placing, um, because like you know the the last movie for me got worse with every showing. Initially, I thought it was fine. Yeah, you know I was like wow that because it really looked good. It was just a well made movie. Like no, they, they all look amazing. No yeah. doubt, they all look fucking. So great. I kind of got like wrapped up in this one. I I I know I liked it a lot, and I do feel it was. It needed it needed more. It needed more movies, more space to, yeah. to tell the story. Yeah. And the only thing that makes me kind of sad about this movie is I think after watching this movie that this trilogy could have been close to the first, to the original, in yeah. terms of quality. Uh, if J.J. Abrams would have been on all three movies and told the story his way, I think we would have had a much, much better trilogy. Kathleen Kennedy's fault. Yeah. Fuckers. And that's about it. All right, guys. So there you go. Uh... Star Wars Episode Nine: Rise of Skywalker is in theaters now. Uh, we urge you to go watch the movie uh, so we can get more Star Wars. I mean, we're always going to get Star Wars. Star Wars ain't going nowhere anytime soon at all. Uh, I'm a little sad mourning the loss of no more Skywalker goodness, but, you know, um, whatever. Uh, anyways, uh, like, share, subscribe, comment on our YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Corker Comics. Uh, come see us, uh, physically at any of our locations here. We're here in Miami on 107th and 8th Street. Also Coral Gables on Lejeune. And then, uh, of course, Pembroke Pines on Pines Boulevard, just east of University. Uh, that's it, right? Yep. May the force be with you guys. Uh, for Tom Pop, Patreon, Fat Man, Little Boy, I'm Steven. One. Later.